I'm John Zaleski. I'm currently a Humanities Research Fellow at New York University in Abu Dhabi. This past spring, I finished up a PhD in religion at Harvard University. And so my project here, which is to develop my dissertation project from Harvard, is examining Muslim and Christian interaction in the early Islamic world, in particular early Islamic Iraq. And the focus of my project is Muslim and Christian ideas about ascetic practices like fasting, celibacy, continuous prayer. I examine the interconnection between the way in which these different communities thought about asceticism. I'd point to two primary initial findings. So one is that Muslim and Christians were defining their ideals of piety, in particular of asceticism, in conversation with each other. So Muslims are often reacting to Christian understandings of ascetic practice, and in turn Christians are responding to Muslim ideals of and writings about asceticism. So the, the second point in connection with that is that earlier scholarship had suggested the possibility of Christian influence on Islam in the area of piety and asceticism. My argument is that this was a, a twofold influence or a twofold exchange. So Muslims are responding to Christian ideas about asceticism, but Christians themselves then come to respond to Muslim practices and beliefs. A big part of my project is to, to understand what that influence is and how we should think about it and how we should talk about it. So I, you know, I argue that we shouldn't see this simply as a matter of Christians influencing Muslims and Muslims borrowing or deriving ideas from Christians. I think it's a much more creative process. So Muslims are, are actively and consciously reworking Christian ideas and more broadly ideas that are part of the religious culture of late antiquity. Muslims are, are sort of consciously developing new traditions that in some ways diverge from these traditions. One of the main challenges is simply the source base. So there are a very large amount of texts, both edited and unedited, so manuscript and published books, that are relevant to Christian and Muslim uh, religious ideas. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges is simply to wade through this vast material and to find texts that can speak to each other. But another challenge, these same texts, they, they pose a methodological challenge, which is that a lot of them are later texts that are describing the practices or sayings of earlier figures, or they're later manuscripts that are preserving texts attributed to earlier authors. So figuring out how to read across those chronological gaps is also a significant challenge. Uh, in addition, I'd say that any, any project that has a comparative element uh, comes with a challenge. So how to, how to connect these at times very different traditions, how to put them in conversation with each other in a way that does justice to the, the fully distinct and independent nature of each tradition. That's a challenge that a lot of previous scholarship has stumbled upon and that is, continues to be a challenge for me. Uh, I've been really lucky with the, the colleagues that I've had here, both the other fellows and the faculty. Uh, right now we have two different reading groups going, so reading classical Arabic texts. Um, I've also gotten really helpful feedback from both the, uh, both the current faculty and other fellows here, in particular in response to my research presentation in the fall. Another uh, point of connection is that I've been able to speak in colleagues' classes and interact with uh, the NYU students as well. So, I mean, one of the main ways in which the, the fellowship has helped me is simply by connecting me with the colleagues uh, here, as I just mentioned. And in addition, there's tremendous support for archival research, which is critical to my studies. Uh, but in addition to that, the opportunity to host a workshop is, is really important. It's, you know, it's a very uh, helpful way in which I could get feedback from other scholars in the field and actually bring them here to Abu Dhabi to, to respond to my book ideas. I think that would be critical as I'm revising my dissertation for publication. Uh, and certainly teaching experience is also a very important part of professionalization. So the, the opportunity for fellows to teach here is, uh, I think, a really critical part of the fellowship. One of the ways in which being in Abu Dhabi is special for my project is that part of my project is to investigate 
a Christian monastic tradition that actually had roots in the Gulf. Um, you know, so there have been churches and monasteries that have been discovered throughout the Gulf region, including in what's now Abu Dhabi Emirate. Um, so there was a monastery discovered in the early 90s, I believe. So uh, a central part of my project, at least on the Christian side, is to investigate the literary and intellectual output of monks who came from the Gulf region and to uncover the, the networks that they developed between the Gulf region and the heartlands of Christian monasticism in the Middle East, which were further to the north. I would, be, I would be very happy if a blurb said something along the lines of, uh, you know, this book offers a vivid look into the, the multicultural fervent of the early Islamic world. Because that's really what I see as the, the broader takeaway of this project, is that to, to understand the early Islamic world, we have to see it as a place in which different cultures and different religious communities were interacting. And it's that interaction that shapes the culture of early Islam.